You've likely seen the forecast in just about every outlet is predicting an extremely active hurricane season, but I'm going to show you three things to look out for, which could make this season a little less active than predicted. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to look at those three things through the course of this video. Then I'm going to show you a couple of those forecasts to talk about how active it could be. And then at the end of the video, stick around for this. I'm going to show you some raw model output, which is hinting at an extremely active season. So that'll be at the end of the video. Before we get into all of that, if you do want to stay updated on the upcoming hurricane season, which is right around the corner, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you happen to find value in this content, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the new subscribers hopping onto the channel recently. All right, before we get into it, I don't think it's going to be a quiet season. I don't want to give that wrong impression, but just like with everything, even if something looks like a slam dunk, oftentimes it doesn't happen. I'm going to give a sports analogy, like last year. Sorry, hockey fans that are from Boston, the Boston Bruins, behemoth through the whole season, juggernaut, President's Trophy winning team. Along comes the eight seed Florida Panthers, expected to get swept. And all of a sudden, the Florida Panthers are the team that advances over the mighty Boston Bruins. That's my sports analogy for this season. It looks like it's a slam dunk that it is going to be super active because of La Nina. On paper, it looks that way, but there are a few things to watch out for. One of the caveats here, one of the things that could throw a wrench into the forecast is Saharan dust. Now, this is out there every year. It's typically most prolific in the early stages of the season, May, June, July. And then climatologically speaking, it tends to back off as we get into the peak months. But... Big Saharan dust outbreak over southern Europe right now, and then also through the Canary Islands, even into the Azores, Cabo Verde Islands, getting a ton of dust right now. Most of it's concentrated closer to Africa, so if it is going to have a giant role in kind of choking out storms. It's not going to shut down the season by any means, but on an individual basis, if a system, if a storm ingests this into its core, that dry, hot, dusty air... It'll tend to choke it out and keep it pretty weak, but we want that dust to be all the way out here too to help those storms ingest it a little bit more. But that is reason number one, Saharan dust could play a role. And if we see that ejecting again off the northern side of Africa, and those storms come rolling off right in here, we could have a slightly positive thing. Again, that doesn't completely shut down the season, so I want to be clear about that. And again, I'm not expecting a quiet season. I do think it's going to be very active, but... Like with anything, I want to give you some of the limiting factors that I'm seeing here. This is a catch-22. The water temperatures are extremely warm. So why is this a positive? I'm not saying it's a positive in that sense, but we do see all of this orange and red out through here. These sea surface temperature anomalies, they've actually backed down a little bit, but nonetheless, very warm for this time of the year. That would argue for some stronger storms in the main development region in between the Lesser Antilles and the African continent in the Cabo Verde Islands. Now, what these storms have a tendency to do if they get strong quick is curve more away from the Caribbean. So this wouldn't necessarily limit the number of storms, but it will help to drive the impactful storms out to sea, more fish storms potentially. That's at least something to watch. Now, like with everything, there's a giant exception to the rule. Back in 2017, Hurricane Irma got very strong, very fast, and it was bullied by the Bermuda High and continued to come to the West. So there's always exceptions to the rule. We take that on a storm-by-storm -storm basis. But with this area being super warm, they're going to have a tendency to get strong quick and then hopefully recurve. Might be a little wish casting there, but again, that's what tends to happen. The other thing, the third thing here, and we're going to keep it right on the sea surface temperature anomaly uh, chart, you see the blue here representing below normal temperatures. What this could do is we have a bigger difference in temperature in the air that is residing right over uh, the water where it's cooler than normal here and then warmer than normal here. That will help to increase the pressure difference over the water and maybe increase wind shear a little bit. Now, the reason for these very active forecasts, these hyperactive forecasts, is because 
of La Nina. El Nino is fading fast. We almost are out of La Nina, or El Nino and heading into La Nina as we get into the 3.4 region, which is right about here. That's where we characterize El Nino and La Nina. We're seeing those blue anomalies come. That would typically lend, that would suggest an active season. And then combined with the warm water temperatures that we have in the Atlantic, that's the reason for the very high forecast. And again, those are, that's the reason. And I do think that is going to end up being the correct side with a very active season. But still some things and some caveats. If we do have that difference in pressure over the Atlantic, though, we could have more wind shear than what is expected. La Nina typically reduces wind shear over the Atlantic, but with that difference in pressure over the Atlantic waters, that might be something to watch. And we could have a little more wind shear that than is expected. The one caveat to that is it's that however to the however, most of the storms in a La Nina year typically go through the Caribbean, and we may end up missing out on where the wind shear sets up closer to uh, up in that realm. So those are the three things that we are going to watch as we watch La Nina come back on. Now, we talked about this in a previous video and. It doesn't matter how many storms form. If it hits you, it's a bad season. So it only takes one. That is a message that I want to make sure that everybody is clear. There could be 100 storms forecast. If none of them hit us, we don't care. Shipping lanes, of course, need to be paying attention. But you catch my drift. I don't want this to impact land. I don't want these storms to impact people. So the one concerning thing is here, one of the most respected forecast entities, Colorado State University, is forecasting 23 storms. The average is 14. Now, I will say, and Dr. Phil Klotzbach here talked about this being their biggest, highest initial forecast, their April forecast ever since Colorado State's been doing this. They've been doing it since 95, and I know you're thinking, Colorado State, they should forecast snow. It's where the mines are. It doesn't matter what region they are in. Of course, Colorado does not get hit by hurricanes, but nonetheless, there are some very smart minds there, and one of the most respected uh, seasonal forecast outlets when it comes to tropical systems is Colorado State. So there is their forecast. Very active season predicted. Again, remember, three things to watch as we move forward into the season. Now, one of the latest things that we have is now the European forecast. Everybody loves to look at the European when it comes to an individual storm. The deal with the seasonal forecast is we're now looking into the next several months, and you see a bunch of bars in, on this map, and I'm going to explain what that is. The June, July, this is for May, June, July, August, September, October. So before I think I showed this to you in a number in the last video, we didn't get to October yet. It only went out to September. So now we're through October. You see the forecast went up. So the European model, the ensemble here, is forecasting 21 named storms. The average to that point is 14.2. So it's calling for a much above average season. With all likelihood, because of La Nina and because of the extremely warm water temperatures, we are going to have a very active season. I'll put the video at the end of this one that shows the difference in the tracks between a strong El Nino, what we had last season, transitioning into a La Nina, which we are likely going to have this season. And you'll see the tracks are much more impactful. So I want to be clear about that, that I don't want any of these limiting factors or any of these things that I just talked about to let your guard down. Even in a, in a slow year, a quiet year, it only takes one I'll end with this because I always bring up this example for that it only takes one. 1992 was a very quiet year. We didn't have the A storm until August. Well, what was that A storm in 1992? That was Hurricane Andrew, and those people in southeast Florida would, and northern, uh, across the North Gulf Coast where it made a second landfall, another landfall, uh, would beg to differ that it was a very quiet season. All righty, guys. I hope that you got something good out of this. I want you to pay attention to those three things as we continue to move through April and get into May and June and eventually in a hurricane season to see how this could play out. Those are the three limiting factors that, again, could have a less active season than what is predicted. Not a less active season when compared to normal. I don't think that's even in the cards, 
but less active than predicted. And again, some of these entities, uh, AccuWeather calling for an explosive season, uh, giving the potential for 30 storms, which would tie the record. WeatherBell also forecasting 30 storms. Uh, that would be nuts. Again, just uh, kind of unheard of numbers for these initial forecasts. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you do want to stay updated on the weather as we venture into hurricane season, we have you covered with sound science and meteorology. You've come to the right place if you like that stuff. And if you like to nerd out with us, hit that subscribe button and we will catch you next time.